Welcome to On The Scene. Of course, I'm your host, Tennessee. We sitting here today with one of Nashville finest. Cashville, all over Tennessee, what's cracking? It's your boy, I'll start Cashville's Prince. You know I had to bring the next big one through, so y'all make sure y'all keep it locked on the scene. I got a lot more up and coming artists for y'all, as well as business professionals. What influenced you to start rapping? You know, how long have you been working at your craft? Um, been rapping, I say, like, five years. I'm 29, so I was about 15 when I started. When I first put pen to pad, it was, I mean, my inspiration comes, like, from within and from my experiences. But more or less what started me rapping is being around a whole lot of people that was into it and watching them. And it was, I mean, it was cool, but to me, sitting on the side, I was kind of looking like, I can do what they doing, you know. So I decided to try it myself. It's like, from that, the feedback I got, even, you know what I'm saying, like ninth grade, 10th grade, just cafeteria table type stuff, it was always positive. And like, I just went from that to put my own money into it. And the feedback was, it was always constant. It was always the same. It was always positive. So I went from that to doing it as a hobby, to doing it as something I had a passion behind it, to now I'm doing it as a career. So just, like I said, it's all based on my my experience. At what point did you decide this is not just something I want to do as a hobby, but this is what I want to do as a career? Uh, that's a good question. I I can't really you know put my finger on the day or the the one you know what I'm saying moment when I felt that, but like I said. I was getting so much positive feedback, it got to a point where I was like, I was doing it casually and it was it was just something moved me. Like if, if I let 100 people hear me rap and probably 95 of them were feeling it, you know, if I let a thousand people hear me, maybe 950 will feel it. If I let a million people hear me, maybe 950,000 or, you know, I have it break down. It's like, I, I just figured, you know, this I need to take it to the next level. I can at least try. You know, I'm comfortable with failing or something as long as I give it my eye. It's just, I can't accept not trying. What is the all-star moniker derived from? How did you get that name? I mean, naturally sports. You know, I mean, it's a sports term for somebody that's at the top of their game. But for me, I, I mean, it's, it's rap, it's sports, it's out there. It's just being at the top of whatever you're doing, being at the top of your craft. Like, I feel like that's me in the rap game I and mean, anything I do. I feel like anything I, I try, if I try hard enough, I'll be successful at it. And I strive to be the best, and that's what the All-Star is. And in the sport, you know, they have All-Star game for the top 20 or so athletes in a given sport. You know, just, they stand out amongst the rest. And that's the way I feel about myself and my craft. What prompted you to put out mixtapes versus albums in the beginning? I mean, in the beginning, I went the mixtape route, honestly, number one, because it, I mean, it was efficient. You know, like, it, it's a little bit cheaper, especially if you're doing the album the right way. And number two, like, I had so much music. Like I said, from 15 to 18, I was 18 when I uh, released my first mixtape. I had so much music from 15 to 18 where I was just in the studio, spending money on studio time, spending money on tracks. And it got to a point where, like, I was like, I gotta do something with that music, you know, it's only as good as the people that hear it. You know, it can be the best song in the world, but if nobody hears it, it's really worthless. So, I mean, I probably had 40, 50 songs at that point. And I was like, I gotta do something with them. So I put 20 of them on the disc, started flooding the neighborhood with it. It kind of buzzed and grew. And uh, at that time, I was going to Tennessee State. I hit the campus with it. I already had a name on campus for battle rapping and all this. So it grew from them two areas. and. Before you know it, it was like, who was our star? Who was our star? And that's what I uh, called my second mixtape. And in the beginning, it was like the mixtape was a build up toward the album. I think a lot of artists lost in that now. Like, they see what an artist like myself did. Last year, I was a mixtape artist of the year. The Southern Entangle Awards, mixtape artist of the year. And uh, that's good and all. Like, I mean, I feel blessed and honored to get that award, but that's like a small piece of the puzzle I'm trying to put together. Like, some some of these artists, especially the younger ones, like, they put out a mixtape and they think that's it. And really, for me, like it says on all my mixtapes, that's promotion, you know I mean? we That's about making your name bigger. Great Goose. What inspired you to write Great Goose? How did that come about? 
Grey Goose. That's what I mean, right? Grey Goose. I mean, that's kind of self explanatory. But now, uh, it, I mean, it's a, so many stories behind that song because naturally, I mean, with the spins we're getting, that song is the reason, is in part the reason why I'm as popular as I am in the South. But that song was like, a, it came from just me and a couple of my homeboys just doing what we do every day, you know, basis, chilling, kicking, and how we kick it. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of little sayings and things we say amongst each other that grow, you know what I'm saying, to be bigger. And a lot of times I take them everyday conversations and put them in song form. Like, I think that's the best music. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the best artists are the ones taking everyday things and making them bigger. How did the remix for Grey Goose come about? How you end up getting it? Um, I mean, to date, we don't really call it a remix, you know, because the, oh. fir the first versions that were, that were heard here were pretty much only heard here. And, you know, the one, uh, the version with myself, Yo God, and Young Jeezy, those are, that's the only one that's BDS and the one that's, you know, playing on radio all over the South and hiding the clubs and whatnot. Um, the way that came to be, those artists being on, I mean, I'm signed through Yo God to my major deal. And um, Young Jeezy and his company, Corporate Thugs, they were they made an offer at the same time. So, it, like around the same time frame, I got cool with both of them dudes. And it was like in the process, of, I think Jeezy was up here working out his deal. And he got with me and was like, man, book some, book some studio time, we can get in there and work, chop something up. That song, like getting them on that song, it was, I mean, it wasn't the same process as just going to get a feature with somebody where you call, you know, this and that. It was like more of a friendship type thing, like, let's get it done.